All right, now that we've gone over these conditions for a genuine option, let's practice with these a little bit. <clears throat> let's take a look at some uh, propositions and determine whether they're live, they're forced, and they're momentous, and see where you <laughs> where you fall with this stuff. Uh, so the first is you know whether the propositions are live. So I'm gonna I'm gonna go through a list of propositions here in a minute and, and explain them, but just for the moment, right? You're just Remember that what, what it means to be live is that you're willing to consider evidence for it. It doesn't mean you actually believe it. It doesn't mean you don't, in fact, disbelieve it. Right? You can disbelieve something and still be live. The only thing, it doesn't matter what other people consider to be live or not. Right? This is simply you. So the question is right, will, whether you're willing to consider evidence for these propositions. All right. So um, let's, let's take a look at the first one. Rationality demands that you resolve known contradictions in your beliefs. So during the course of the semester already, right, you probably found a few contradictions within your beliefs uh, pretty quickly. Right? And according to this proposition, right, rationality demands that you resolve that contradiction. What that means is you reject one or the other, and you know, preferably with good reason, right? preferably with good reason. So. You know, if you find that you have contradictions about the, <laughs> the relationship between parts and whole, right, you ought to resolve that contradiction uh, by rejecting one or more of the beliefs that causes you know, the problem to begin with. All right, so that's that's live. Second proposition. Actually, not not sorry, not that it's live, but that's that's the first one. That's the first proposition. Asking you whether you think it's live. Second uh, proposition. Uh, rationality does not demand this, right? So. According to this, you can be rational and have known contradictions in your beliefs. And there's nothing that prohibits you from saying, oh, wow, that's a contradiction in my beliefs. I'm still going to hold on to them. And according to this proposition, you would still be rational. So that's rationality. Second, uh, third proposition. Uh, there is a moral order. There is a moral order. Now, what this means is that there's some real answer to the question how should you live your life? It's not that, you know, it's not, what I'm not saying here is that there's, you know, people say that there is, or the cultures that, and, and they enforce this, right? That's not what I'm saying. There, there is a question. There is an answer to the question, how should you live your life, right? And this is what it means to be moral or immoral, that you, you know, live up to the standard, right? So that, that's, that's one proposition, or sorry, third proposition there. There is a moral order. Whether it's known or not, whether people believe it, there is a moral order. Okay. Fourth proposition. There is not a moral order. There is no answer to the question, how should you live your life? There is no standard by which your life should be led. Uh, there's, you know, it doesn't even necessarily follow that you should live however you want, because, you know, that would be an answer to the question, how should you live however you want? Right? There is no answer to the question. Right? It's a bad question to begin with. <laughs> Uh, that's the fourth proposition. Fifth proposition. Uh, some things are physical. Some things are physical. So we look at the objects around us, these trees, these bushes, right? Some of these, <laughs> or at least some things that you know, all of those are physical. At least there are some things that are physical. It's not to say that some things are not, right? Just that at least some things are physical. Okay. Sixth proposition. Uh, some things are not physical. There are some non-physical things that exist. So we've seen some candidates for this already, right? Numbers, truth relations, truth itself, right? Um, so according to this proposition, there are some, you know, some of these things exist and they are non-physical. It's not to say that there aren't any physical. Okay, you, you sure, it could be some physical things, right? Not, not saying one way or the other on that. The only claim here is that at least some things that exist are non-physical, right? They are not composed of atoms. Uh, seventh proposition, um, there are no non-physical things. There are no non-physical things. Right? Uh, this is to say that everything that exists is physical. If it exists, it's composed of matter. Okay. Next proposition, there is some sort of divinity. Right? Not saying it exactly right. Not taking Pascal's route here, right? Just not saying which one. Just saying there is some sort of divinity. Uh, there's some sort of deity, some sort of god, something like that. Right? Next proposition. There is not some sort of divinity. Right? There is not some sort of divinity. So remember at this point, right, all we're doing is asking whether it's live, not whether you believe one or the other. Right? 
that, just whether it's live, whether you're willing to consider evidence for it. Okay. Uh, next proposition. Uh, knowledge requires consensus. So what this means is that if we are to know something, then we have to collectively agree on it, right? So this should sound a lot like Clifford. Right? <laughs> and it basically is, right? Uh, we should, if we are going to claim knowledge, then there has to be consensus amongst people. We have to be able to agree on this. And that, you know, any outliers need to be, you know, probably need to be answered, but just merely being an outlier by that condition, well, that doesn't count as knowledge. Next proposition. Uh, knowledge does not require consensus. So the idea here is that uh, there can be these outliers that know, uh, some people on the periphery or, or what have you, in some way, shape, or form. They know they have knowledge even though everybody else doesn't agree. Right? Even though everybody else doesn't agree. Okay. Uh, next proposition. There is some absolute truth. Right? And what absolute truths are, just to kind of refresh your absolute truths, are true... You know, first of all, true regardless of what anybody else believes, right? <laughs> regardless of what anybody else believes. Uh, there are these truths that are true in any circumstance, any situation. The change of circumstance does not determine whether the truth is true or not. So, you know, it is cloudy outside. Right? This is a relative truth. It's cloudy outside when I'm standing out here beneath all these clouds. Uh, but if I had a sunny day, I'd say it's sunny outside, right? That's a relative truth. It's in fact false, but it's relative to the conditions of the day. Right? Uh, there is some absolute truth as to say that there are some of these truths that are true regardless of any other circumstance or condition. Next proposition. Uh, there are no absolute truths. There is no absolute truth. It's a rejection of this. Every truth is dependent upon, you know, whether it's true or not, it's dependent upon the situation at hand. Right? That's what makes something true or not, is if, uh, you, know, uh, you know, is the circumstances. Right? So, every, so I said, it is cloudy outside. Well, that's true because of the circumstances. And every truth out there is like that. Okay. Next proposition. Uh, some minds are not physical. Now, the idea here is that uh, I, th I think we talked a little bit about this, right? the difference between the mind and the brain. Right? There are neurons that happen in your skull. Right? They make connections. That's where neurons are. But your mind is something different. Right? Here are neurons firing. What your mind has are beliefs, intentions, uh, perceptions. Right? Because perceptions, beliefs, and intentions don't look like neurons connecting. Right? So if I have the belief... I'm standing in front of a camera. It's not as if my neurons spell that out, right? Yeah, I can look at look at that. With, no, that it doesn't work that way. So there's a real mystery there about the relationship between the mind and the brain. And if uh, you know, uh, according to this according to this proposition, uh, some you know, I'm not trying to say all minds are physical, but at least some minds are non-physical, right? Non-physical. There's a difference between the mind and the brain. Brains are physical, minds are not. Brains have neurons, minds have beliefs, and these are two different things. Next proposition. All minds are physical. This is just to say, look, okay, you, you've pointed to a clever problem regarding beliefs and, and neurons, but we just don't know enough yet. And by the, at the end of the day, we're going to find out that, you know, or actually, whether we find out or not, right? Beliefs just are neurons firing. Neurons connecting, and tensions just are neurons connecting. Right? That's all that. That's all that. Minds are our brains. There's no difference between the two, other than ones that we've imagined. Okay. Um. So next proposition. Uh, there is an existence after physical death. So once you die, right? Once your body dies, there's some sort of existence hereafter. Um, you know, spirit, souls, what have you, however you want to talk about it. I'm not talking about like, you know, your body decaying and becoming part of a tree, right? That, you know, it's like, no, that, that, that's not what I'm talking about, right? That, now, once your body dies and decays, right, you're gone is, is, the, is one way of looking at it. But according to this, like, no, even after death and decay, no, you continue to exist somehow as a spirit, as a soul, whatever, right? Whatever those accounts say. There is, next proposition, there is some sort of existence before physical, before your physical body. So before you're born, your physical body was born. Before 
you know, your physical, before you existed in this physical body, uh, you had some sort of existence before, you know, reincarnation, whatever, right? Just some kind of account of this that you existed some, you know, Plato's forms, right? <laughs> you existed somehow with the forms before uh, your physical birth or before your physical existence, right? Okay. So, existence after physical death, existence before physical birth. Next proposition, and the last one we're going to look at, um, there is no existence outside of physical life, right? Once you know, your life, your existence is limited to and confined to your body. Once your body dies, you die. Before your body existed, you didn't exist, right? You exist all and only with your body. Okay, so these are you know, a fair number of propositions here. <laughs> Write down in your notes which ones are live, right? That means what you are willing to consider evidence for what you're willing to consider evidence. And, you know, I'll show you down below, right? You'll click off which ones. Click off which ones you uh, think are live.